So today we with our we are with Colonel retired Michael Burroughs. Colonel Burroughs, and just so everybody knows, this is a, a series of interviews with small business owners or those involved in the community who are helping others. And uh, we hope you enjoy this podcast uh, interview. Uh, Colonel Burroughs spent 37 years serving our country in the United States Army, National Guard, and Army Reserves in a number of key leadership positions throughout his long career. He served during Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2005 and 2006. His awards and decorations include the Legion of Merit, Bronze Star Meritorious Service Medal with two Oak Leaf Clusters, Army Commendation Medal with Silver Oak Leaf Cluster, Army Achievement Medal with Oak Leaf Cluster, Good Conduct Medal, National Defense Service Medal with Bronze Star, Global War and Terrorism Expeditionary Medal, Global War and Terrorism Service Medal, and the Humanitarian Service Medal for the Mississippi Flood of 1993. He is a graduate of Illinois State University with a BS degree in management and received his master's in strategic studies through the Army War College. Colonel Burroughs is married to Bella Burroughs and has three grown daughters, Katie, Madeline, and Lauren, and resides in the Woodlands, Texas. He has taken his years of leadership experience and put it to work for RIP Medical Debt, a national charity abolishing health care debt for vet Americans and veterans across the country. He is also heading up Victory for Veterans, Inc., a national nonprofit with the mission to provide suicide prevention and, redu and reduction for veterans and first responders by healing invisible wounds through holistic modalities and providing year-round Warriors for Life online peer support. Colonel Burroughs is also a seven-year board member for the National Veterans Transition Service, Inc., which is also known as Reboot, out of San Diego, California. In his spare time, he rides his Harley. All right. You, you have a, a, a very lengthy background there, Colonel, and I'm so thrilled to have you here uh, uh, to visit with me today. Um, gosh, I, I don't even I'm, know where to start. I mean, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> great. <laughs> um, so the Army War College, I mean, wow, I, I didn't even know there was an Army War College. There is. There is. Uh, you know, each one of the services have their own war colleges and stuff like that. And mm. uh, you have to get selected. You have to be on an order of merit list. And mm -hmm. I was very fortunate enough to to do that um, as a lieutenant colonel uh, before I got promoted to, to Fulberg colonel. Um, and I went to the war college uh, from 2000 to 2002. Um, and unfortunately, uh, one of my classmates, uh, died uh, mm. in the bombing of the Pentagon on 9-11. Oh, wow. And so uh, we started out with a class of 400 plus. Um, we ended up graduating about 200 and some odd uh, individuals because a lot of them got mobilized for Afghanistan after 9-11. So yeah. it was a unique time period, you know, in our American history. Yeah, I remember it well. It, uh, man, it's just... Uh... I don't even know what to say. I, I'm I'm so happy that there are groups like yours, and we'll talk about that in a second, that are there to support veterans, because I remember vets coming back from the Vietnam War and getting, it seemed like, zero support. And um, and I'm so happy that, that you're doing what you're doing. So I'm going to start out with some personal questions, okay, just sure. to, to get, so people can get to know you a little bit better. Um, how would your family and friends describe you? Uh, a workaholic. <laughs> um, I usually go. I usually go seven days a week, uh, and uh, uh, you know, just I volunteer. You know, my wife says if you volunteer for one more thing, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, yeah, I just I, I like to stay very very active. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, that's important to me and, uh, you know, following my service, uh, with the military, I said, Hey, how can I best serve veterans? And, right. and I think I'm doing that. And, uh, I want to continue doing that until the day they fold my flag. I understand. Um, now you said you grew up in Peoria, correct? Yeah, I was born in Peoria, Illinois, uh, lived in a small town of Washington, Illinois, across the river, across the Illinois river. Mm -hmm. of about uh, 10,600 and 
left there right after graduating midterm from Washington Community High School and went into the Army in January of 1975. Wow. So when you were a kid, did you ever think that you would be doing what you're doing now? Um, you know, at that age, I had no idea what I was going to be doing, <laughs> <laughs> to really be honest with you. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I, I really didn't. And it was kind of a fluke. Uh, I had a girlfriend at the time who actually got a hold of the recruiter. Uh, I don't know if she was trying to get rid of me or if she was trying to get me to grow up, but the recruiter showed up at my door and one thing led to another and boom, I was off on my way to Fort Lenonwood, Missouri. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> well, Yeah. Did you ever see her again? No, I'm just kidding. It's uh... actually, actually, she, uh, yeah, she, we, we were married for uh, quite a while. Oh, okay. Um, so when you were starting out your career in the service, um, what what were you involved in? Were you involved because you you went to the Army War College? I mean, were you involved in strategy? Were you involved in intelligence? Those type of things. No, not really. When I first went to the army, I was a private. So <laughs> you could you you could have called me radar. Uh I actually went off to uh, Indianapolis and I became a unit clerk. Hmm. And my first duty assignment was uh Fort Ord, California with the 7th Infantry Division. Uh and then from there I went to Shape, Belgium, uh and I oh. served under Alexander Haig, the Supreme Allied Commander in an aviation unit that mm -hmm. flew him all over the all of Europe for three years. So started out enlisted nine years, and then I went off to OCS and then put in 28 years commission service. Oh, wow. Well, we thank you so much for your service. It's, you know, when I talk to people who have served and I think about that responsibility and what they have to go through, I'm, I'm just very grateful to be in this country. As an immigrant, uh, I'm an immigrant from Holland, and I just appreciate so much about this country and, and those who serve and, and protect it. Uh, I'm very grateful for. Um, who would you say has been one of the most uh, crucial or important persons in your life? Who's influenced you the most? Um, I would probably have to say uh, at the time it was uh, my commander mm -hmm. in Europe with the 357th Aviation Detachment. At the time, uh, he was a captain. He got promoted to major. Uh, John P. Edwards. Um, he has since retired. He retired as a full bird colonel. Uh, he he lives in the southern part of Illinois down in Edwardsville, um, and I am still in contact with him today. He was my mentor. He was my coach. Uh, you know, he really got me motivated and thinking about, you know, making a career out of the military and, and, and eventually getting my commission. That's awesome. Um... Was there a, a point in your life that you felt was a, a turning point in your life uh, where things changed dramatically for you? Well, I think the most, in, the, the biggest thing for me was uh, in 2015 on 8 December, uh, my father-in-law, who was a Vietnam veteran, he was a Marine sniper, mm -hmm. uh, died from suicide. And at that time, uh, I created a program called Warriors for Life. Uh, it was called Sponsor of Vet Life uh, to begin with. Uh, we were doing some virtual work, and then uh, eventually uh, we, we changed it over to Warriors for Life. And that's when I made up my mind that, hey, you know, we need to do something, uh, whether we have a Vietnam veteran or a Korean veteran, you know, or a, a Gulf War veteran, Iraqi, Afghanistan, it didn't make a difference. Uh, if they served, you know, we have an obligation. I felt I had an obligation to do something to go out there and reduce uh, the number of veteran suicides. Um, and and as you know, a lot of our first responders have served. They have served over the last 20 years in, in many right. of our wars uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. So uh, they wear a different uniform, but they still serve our country. Uh, they serve our communities. And so I wanted to incorporate first responders uh, into my mission to help reduce uh, veteran and first responder suicide because of the trauma that they go through on a daily basis and the trauma that our soldiers have gone through and our sailors and, you know, our airmen, our Marines, all services uh, during this, you know, these many years that the United States has been at war and, and all the deployments in between. 
Yeah, I, I have a good friend at church who uh, I think was in Iraq and then served uh, in the police force. Uh, I, I'm not sure where in the country, but when I think about those, not only that serve overseas, but that serve in our police forces and have to deal with all that they have to deal with on a, a daily routine basis, I, I'm just very grateful, but I all, also wonder how they can deal with it mentally. And um, I had another friend who is a disabled vet who runs a, a small business here in, in Houston. And he said that the suicide rate is upwards of 25%. Is that right? It's it's high. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if we'll ever get really an accurate number because not, you know, not all of the states are reporting into the VA on the number of Mm -hmm. of veterans that we're losing per day. Uh, you know, there's, mm -hmm. a, we, we, at one time we were calculating 22 per day, uh, that we were losing, uh, to suicide, but, um, it's even tougher to track the numbers of our first responders, right. That we're losing yeah. our firemen, our, our EMTs, our, our yeah. police officers, you know, the pe people that we're losing on the front line. And that number has had to have gone up during the pandemic over the last two and a half years uh, with all the work that they've done mm -hmm. to try to keep America uh, America healthy. So, yeah, we've, we've got a big mission out there. There's no doubt about it. We've got a Absolutely. lot of people to work for. Um, in your life, like anyone's life, we have failures, right? And what would you consider one of your biggest failures and how did you deal with that in your life? Well, I think uh, professionally, um, you know, I've I've been very fortunate. I've had a great professional career. Um, I'm I'm having a great professional career here in the nonprofit space. Um, not so hot on the marriage side of the house. So, mm -hmm. I would say that's probably my biggest failure. Um, you know, and uh, but you know the the woman that I'm married to now, Bella. We've been together for twelve years. Um, you know, we've got a great relationship. And so I think after 65 years, I finally got it right. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Hey, I, hey, I'm, I'm there with you. I understand. Tr trust me. Right. Right. Um, and is there a way that you find, I mean, it, it doesn't sound like this, but let me ask you the question anyway. Is there a way that you find to balance life and work? It's tough. It, it, mm -hmm. it is really tough. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm at a good point right now because all three of my daughters are grown. They've gone through college. You know, they've got their careers. Right. I can tell you, if I was doing this 20 years ago or 30 years ago when I had small children, it would really have been tough. But, you know, that's the price that I paid with marriages also. And that's deployments, being gone, you know, being in the military. Um, it, it is it is very tough on a family, um, you know, but I, I try to find a way, you know, I, I've got my Harley out there and you kind of mentioned that at the end of the in, uh, introduction and, you know, every once in a while I take a break and I get some wind therapy, you know, I, I get out there on the motorcycle and, uh, you know, I'm very careful. I've been riding all my life, but I, it just, it's very relaxing. It's enjoyable. Um, you know, and the weather's great down here in Texas, so I don't have to put it up during the winter. That's right. It's not like being <laughs> Illinois. Yes. There you go. Yes, there I understand. Go. I can relate to that. Although I'm, I'm my my therapy is tennis, but uh, yeah, I play tennis too. <laughs> Do you really? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll have to talk after, more about that another right. time. Right. But after her hearing about how you serve, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so right now, I mean, you are involved in these projects that are so important. But I guess I want to get a sense of your motivation. What motivates you to do what you do? I just, I, I you know, I, I, it, it's kind of hard to describe, but I mean, it's just, um, I mean, I'm just inspired. I'm inspired to help veterans. Um, to me, it's not about growing a business or making a profit. It's about right. Right. Taking people's donations and fundraising and putting them to good work to save lives, uh, you know, and to help people through, you know, what they're going through, whether it's post-traumatic stress disorder, whether it's traumatic brain injuries, military sexual trauma, any type of invisible wound 
that our first responders and our veterans have out there, right? I'm motivated, you know, and, and yeah. uh, you don't, you, you don't have to light a fire under me. <laughs> That's awesome. So here's where I'd, I'd like to just delve into victory for veterans, warriors for life a little bit. Sure. Um, you know, we've been talking about the flowers on every grave uh, here at the Houston National Cemetery, but your goal, if I recall, is to have this project spread throughout the United States into, was it 148 different cemeteries? Uh, I think the last time I checked on the VA, I think there's either 153 or 158, somewhere in that that number. But yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I want to do it across the country. Uh, you know, we do wreaths uh, 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 across America, you know, during the Christmas time period. Right. And I think Memorial Day is a great day to really pay honor and homage and respect to all of our military service men and women that have served us, uh, you know, across this country. and that's the place to do it. And, you know, we just want to be able to place a rose at the foot of their grave on Memorial Day. Uh, In my particular case, uh, you know, since I'm a retired colonel, I give them a salute and I thank them for their service. Uh, And then I move on to the next grave. Um, And I can tell you, the families and the kids that come out and do this, they really get a great education on what Memorial Day is really, truly about. So, uh, it's a fantastic event, and it also helps us with our mission. So a certain percentage of those donations not only go for the rose, but it helps us with our healing through, uh, you know, uh, holistic modalities, uh, through our hyperbaric oxygen Right. Chambers. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I, I think the, the, the viewers want to hear a little bit more about oh, yeah, how you yeah. help the veterans. Well, we're very excited. I mean, you know, we've been around since 2016, but it takes a long time to raise money. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, we were able to to get enough last year to where we were able to purchase two hyperbaric oxygen therapy chambers. Uh, we have located those with a uh, doctor, uh, Dr. Jeff Baruski, by the way, out of Huntsville. And our goal up there is to treat veterans and first responders free of charge. Uh, and and what, is these, that, what does that do, that, that hyper... The hyperbaric oxygen pumps oxygen, which passes the brain barrier, which helps heal traumatic brain injury and helps ease uh, the depression and the anxiety from PTSD. Hmm. Um, and we're just really excited about it. You know, we're building, we're, we're building the, the prototype, right, in Huntsville, along with some other modalities that we're going to be adding. So there will be a menu for veterans and first responders, as well as civilians. We're going to be treating civilians as well. Um, and then we want to take that prototype and we want to duplicate that. We want to move, put one up down here in Kingwood, close to Houston. We want to move into Austin, you know, San Antonio, Dallas, Fort Worth. And then we've got 35 cities around the country that we have earmarked that have the highest population of veterans and first responders. So, you know, we've got a big mission. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, and, uh, you know, we got the first pillar going up there in in Huntsville, but I guarantee you over the next couple of years, you're going to be hearing a lot more about the Life Readiness Centers under Victory for Veterans. That's awesome. And and speak a little bit about, if you would, about the Warriors for Life, because this is a place, if I recall, where people can uh, dial in and they can talk amongst themselves. These are other veterans or first responders? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we developed the program about six years ago. We're coming up on seven years. Um, It's free to veterans, first responders, caregivers. You know, we even have civilians that jump in. We, you know, we we don't care, you know, if if they want to be a part of our group, they're more than welcome. Um, All of our facilitators are 100% disabled veterans, uh, you know, that just kind of monitor the group. They get everybody online. Mm-hmm. They come up with different topics, different methodologies, different ways of healing, you know, different subjects. But it's just a great place for veterans and first responders to actually share their story, feel comfortable uh, in a non-stigma environment, you know, and just where sharing is caring. And, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, we love it. We haven't even advertised. So this is really my first advertisement, and <laughs> okay. we're excited. We want more people to join us. We're meeting seven days a week now, so it's an awesome oh, wow. program. And, and I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot of healing that comes with that. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you can get online with other veterans that have gone through the same experience mm-hmm. or first responders that you've gone through, um, and then you start feeling comfortable, you build that trust, right? And it's like 500 pounds of weight comes off of your shoulders, right? Yeah. And yeah. I can tell you the people that have been a part of this program for five or six years, uh, uh, initially, they were people that just joined. And, and all of my facilitators have come to me and said, hey, I want to volunteer. I want to do a night, right? And so it's a continuing healing process for them. But it's so gratifying to help other people, you know, and we feel like we're saving lives, you know, by doing this. Well, well, I, I so much appreciate you spending time with me today, Michael, Colonel Burroughs. Oh, absolutely. Uh, It, uh, what I see as the need in this country, as I watch the news every day, there, there's so many issues, and I, I think the healing that needs to happen in this country, you're, you're part of it, there, but there's so many other aspects to healing that needs to happen, oh. and, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad we could spend the time together here. Well, hey, you know what, and, and Al, I really appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing here in the community in Texas uh, with your podcast. Uh, it's unbelievable, and, and I just hope people we'll reach out to you and, and we can get more of these going and get the word out. Um, you know what about our, mm-hmm. what, what are small businesses and our nonprofits, right? What they're doing in the community and how they can help and how we can connect. So what you're doing is fantastic. And, and I really appreciate it as well. Oh. Well, thanks. You. Thank you, Michael. And uh, for those that are wondering how they can contribute uh, victory for veterans, what, what's the, what's the website? Michael? It's victoryforveterans.org. Okay. Uh, you know, so if you just put in victory for veterans and you go into Google, um, it's the first one that pops up, which is great. Right. And, uh, you know, they can go online. Um, uh, our website's a little, little old right now, uh, but it's, it's easy to maneuver, but we're in the middle of redesigning it and, and making it bigger. And, and if you guys want to see what I do every morning, you can go out to my blog and see my motivational quotes and inspirational quotes that I post every day, 365 days uh, out of the year for the last four years. <laughs> Just don't get okay. too bogged down. <laughs> and, and that's at that website as well, Victor. That's for at Veterans that website. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do a, I, I do a message of the day. Uh, like today's uh, message was uh, proactive. Um, so I... I, I share a couple other proactive uh, quotes uh, from from some other authors. And then I have my own proactive quote about leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just to inspire and, you know, get people going in the right direction, you know? Right, right. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for joining us today, uh, Colonel Burroughs. And I know that your projects will be successful. There, Not only is there a need but there's a lot of support out there, I think, as well. And uh, so we appreciate you very much, sir. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.